No, security isn't dead, but it is a balancing act between security and convenience. The more secure you are, the less convenient life becomes. And whilst I agree with that, I do teach that there are three levels of security that everybody should be doing. These are super easy to do and they don't cause any inconvenience. And then there are two additional levels which are slightly more advanced. I'm going to show you all five levels and you can stop at the level that you feel comfortable with because everybody is different. So let's start with level one, which is passwords. Which of these passwords do you think is more secure? We have Technique over here and we've got Coffee House over here. Now, it may look like Technique is the stronger password. I mean, it does have uppercase, lowercase and a symbol, but it's going to take a hacker six hours to crack it. Whereas Coffee House only has uppercase and lowercase, but that's going to take a hacker one month to crack. Why? Well, it boils down to the number of characters. Technique over here has nine characters, whereas Coffee House has 11. The longer the password, the longer it will take a hacker to crack, as you can see from this image from Hive Systems. So make your password at least 12 characters long. It should also not be anything that you can find in a dictionary, such as the word jeopardizing. These can easily be hacked with a dictionary style type of attack where hackers will run all these passwords against a dictionary list until they crack it. I've got an entire video on password cracking which I will link to below. Now passwords should also be unique to each website you visit. If you do this, when a big company has yet another data leak and your info goes for sale on the dark web, you don't have all your accounts compromised at once since you're not going to be using the same password everywhere. A pro tip here is to make a sentence out of the password that you will remember. For example, it's cold today on Instagram. But obviously it's not so super easy to remember 12 character sentences for each of your platform. So what a lot of people do is save those passwords in the browser. Just don't. Because this looks like absolute garbage, but this is the password file from the Chrome browser. Running a little utility simply converts that into usernames and passwords. See how simple it was to get those passwords? This brings us on to level number two, which is a password manager. Now, for some bizarre reason, this sounds super scary, but it's not. It's super easy and it just makes your life that much more secure. In its core, a password manager is just an app and it lives on your desktop or it lives on your phone or it lives in both places together. Whenever you sign up for a new website, you can get it to generate a really long, strong password for you. That password is unique for each and every website, and all you have to do is hit the save button. That's it. Now, whenever you log back into that website, it will automatically put it in for you. And if you want to access the same website on your phone, it will just do the same thing. Plus, what I really love about a password manager is that you can share information securely with the people that you trust. You can share certain passwords with your family, such as your Netflix password that everybody keeps forgetting for some reason. You can also share in your password manager things like credit card information, as well as secure notes. I have notes about life insurance policies, medical insurance, allergies, medication, home policies. This is vital information to have at your fingertips and especially in a case where god forbid i am not available she's got access to absolutely everything so a password manager really isn't that scary or complicated and i would highly encourage you to use one now that we have our passwords under control we're gonna move on to level number three which is <laughs> two-factor authentication. Now, people use two-factor authentication and multi-factor authentication or MFA interchangeably, but essentially it means that after you log into a website, you need to take another step to prove that you are you. For example, you put your username and password and then a unique code is sent to your cell phone via a text message. And since you're the only one who should have access to your cell phone, it confirms to the website that you are indeed you. What you want to do is set up two-factor authentication, but ideally not via text message. If someone's able to do something called a SIM swap, they are able to get your cell phone number registered to them, which means 
they're gonna get those text messages. What you really want to do is set up two-factor authentication to use an app called Google Authenticator or another app called Authy and they both work with Android and iOS as well. Again, super simple. Essentially, when you look at the app, you will notice that those codes keep changing, which makes it almost impossible for an outsider to access that. Now, when you log into the website that supports 2FA with authentication, after you put in your username and password, you're gonna be asked for this code. If it matches, then you're in. Oh, and when you get a new phone, if you're using Google Authenticator that is backed up to your Google account, you can simply continue as normal. So no issues there either. Again, an Authenticator app by itself sounds super scary, but in reality, it's a more secure way of putting in the code that you get on your phone via text message. Now, up to here is where everybody should be at the very least including your kids and including your parents those two age group demographics are statistically the most likely to get scammed so by making sure that they have at least these three levels of security they will be miles ahead as far as their security is concerned now there are two more levels which i personally would like everybody to do but i understand it's not practical for everybody Level number four is something called a hardware key. This is a Yubi key. Many websites allow you to use a hardware key as your second authenticator. So instead of putting those codes in from the authenticator app, you just plug this key into your computer, touch the little gold disk, and you're able to log into the website. Now there is something called a pass key, which is starting to roll out, and I'm gonna have a whole video about that too. So now that your accounts are secure, Let's talk about level number five, which is scrubbing your personal data. This is so critically important and yet a lot of people don't do that. If you go do a Google search on your name, your phone number, your email address, you typically are gonna find them across many websites. Now, Google has a new feature which allows you to remove your personal information, but remember, it only removes it from the Google search. It doesn't remove it from those websites. If you want that information removed from those websites, you're gonna to have to go to each of those websites, find a way to get your information removed and ask them to remove it. This takes an extraordinary amount of time. I don't have that kind of time. I personally use a service called Delete Me, which are also today's sponsors of the video. Now, if you've been on my channel before, you know that I've mentioned them before because they are the set and forget service, which I really like. You simply log in to delete me, complete your profile, and then they act as your agent. They go to all the websites and they get your information removed for you. And the best bit is that they keep doing it. So even when those websites get your information back into them, delete me will still get it removed again and again and again. You also get this lovely report showing you the status of each website and their removal stage. Some are super quick, whilst others take a couple of weeks to do. What shocks me every time I see this report is just how many websites that I had no idea about that have my information. They really should be a law against this thing. I have a link in the description where you can get a discount for using Delete Me, and I think this is a must. So, what level of security are you? Let me know in the comments below and let's help protect not only ourselves but our family and friends and make it that much harder for scammers and hackers to take over accounts. And speaking of scammers, have you seen this video of how scammers are cloning your voice? Check that out over here. Hit the head down here to subscribe and help me get to that 1 million sub mark. Please give the video a thumbs up before you head out. I'll see you in this video or this video, or I'll see you in both. Let's go.